Hey everybody, Jim Ingersoll here. I want to talk to you about something I really like uh, talking about, which is joint ventures. And I'm going to give you a case study today, exactly how it works um, and how the deal gets participated in, who gets what, and really how we keep the deal safe so everybody walks away with a nice return. If you don't do that, then there's no use doing a deal. You agree? So give me a second. I've got to share my screen here. Just give me one second and I will pull up my PowerPoint, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna to talk to you today about joint ventures, and it's uh, something I've used successfully uh, many times, actually, over the last six or eight years. I've been doing them a long time now, and I like doing them because it allows other people to participate in the deals that, that I find and the deals that I create, including the cash flow and the equity. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. Now, I hope you're wondering, uh, the same questions I am today, like, is there a tax-free way to do a single family rental? Is there a way to have your health savings account, your educational savings account, your Roth IRA, your traditional IRA, your solo 401k, whatever it is, invest in a single family home? Now, there's a couple ways you can do it, of course. You can, uh, if you have enough money in your account, your IRA can easily buy a property like this one that, that I bought last year. This house we bought for around $70,000 in Richmond and we put 30,000 in it. So the total investment's 100. We've got this rented out to a uh, great residents right now um, and they're renting it at $1,200 a month. So that's a solid rental. It's not like a gigantic home run. It's just, you know, a good rental investment. Um, after we pay taxes and insurance and all that, uh, we net around 900 bucks a month. So if you do quick ROI, then you know that's close to a 10% ROI just on cash flow if you were to pay cash. Now, there's also the component of a rental property called equity. This is in an area that's gentrifying quickly, but right now it appraised at 150. So we've got a $100,000 investment. Um, secured against an appraisal of $150,000, rented at $1,200 a month. You see how that works? Now, I hope you're wondering this question. Is there a way to leverage that property? Because my health savings account, I just started it with Quest, Quest Trust, and it's only got 1000 bucks in it, or 8000 bucks in it, or whatever the number is. It does not have a hundred grand in it. So how can you possibly do that in a health savings account, an educational savings account, you're saving up for your kids, your grandkids, college, whatever. And is there a way to invest in that property passively if you've got the money in your account, but you don't have the deal? So like one group of people have the deal and no money in their account, and the other group has money in their account, but no deal. And with a joint venture, all that comes together. And the way that you do it, I'm going to show you right now in a case study. I'm going to show you a case study of a property that, that I did in my health savings account. Um, my health savings account owned the property and joint ventured with somebody else's Roth IRA. Okay, so let me show you how it worked. We bought this uh, several years ago and we sold it in 2019. So about one year ago, we sold this property. It's a four bedroom house in Richmond. And we purchased it with equity financing. That's basically what a joint venture really is. Don't you agree? It really is. And all the rent and all the future equity is then split 50-50. Okay, that's the way that it works. <clears throat> this house was in a cul-de-sac over near the, near the VA hospital. We bought it as a foreclosure. I think it was HUD or whatever it was. Um, and uh, at that point, the area was sort of shaky. It wasn't a perfect area, but guess what happened over the last four or five years? It gentrified, it improved, it got better. That cul-de-sac improved. So the entire time that we, we owned that, we just rented it Section 8 on a four bedroom voucher. I don't do very much Section 8 rental, but that one made sense at the time because of the location and things. And uh, let me show you exactly how the finances worked out again. I was the HSA portion of this case study. My health savings account owned the property, but it did not have $100,000 in it to just buy it outright. So I leveraged it with somebody else's Roth IRA. The cool thing is you can leverage, okay? And you can do that with equity financing, okay? That's the way that we did it. 
So let me go through the property first. This is the actual investment. We paid $70,000 for this property. We put around 22,500 bucks in it. So the total investment was 92.5, okay? The ARV stands for after repair value. And when we bought this uh, several years back, we thought the ARV was around $130,000. It's important for your property to have equity the day that you buy. So did you catch that? The ARV was 130. We invested a total of $92,500. My health savings account owned this property. It did not have $92,500 in it. So we joint ventured with a Roth IRA that provided all of the funding except for the deposit. And that's how we leveraged it. Now we rented it section eight, $1,425 a month. And let's look at how all this works out. <clears throat> so we rented it actually at $1,245 a month. That's a, a transposed number on the previous slide. And taxes in Richmond are low, um, though they're going up because of our some of our crazy government, but they are going up. But right now that property had had taxes of only $1,320 a year. Insurance was around $650 a year. So the total for my taxes and insurance were around $164.17 a month, leaving us with a net cash flow of 1080 and 83 cents. Now I said, we rented this uh, section eight, they paid 1245 a month, they deposited the money um, direct, so it was very easy. And then uh, we, also used, we also used a property manager, I don't have that fee in here. Um, you can use one or not, depending on what side of the joint venture you're on, of course. So this $92,500 investment created a cash flow stream of roughly $1,000 a month. Catch that? So what happened to the 1080 that came in every month to my health savings account? So I would receive a net of 1080. I would hold back the taxes and the insurance and I would pay those when they were due, of course. That's no problem. You can do that through your, through your IRA, your health savings account or your educational savings account. It's easy. And so that left a net bottom line cash flow of 540 per month. <clears throat> now, I would keep 540 per month in my health savings account. And then I would also send a check, either monthly or quarterly, depending on what your joint venture partner wants, for 540 per month. Okay, so that $92,000 investment in this property created a net payment every month of 540 bucks. 540 for my uh, health savings account, 540 for the Roth IRA that I joint ventured with. Think of that, that's almost $6,500 a year of tax-free cash flow. I hope you're, you're seeing why I like doing these. Um, and again, my health savings account did not have the $92,000 investment. So it leveraged it, equity financing with a Roth IRA. <clears throat> now we sold it a year ago, like I said, and we sold it uh, for a lot more than we initially thought the property was worth. Remember I said when we bought it, we had instant equity, but we thought it was worth 135. Well, the area improved and it went up 20 grand. We actually sold this exact house for $155,000, creating $62,500 of gross equity, okay? So again, we had $6,500 a month, um, both for the uh, health savings account and for the Roth IRA that came together in this joint venture. That over the four year investment was roughly $26,000. The equity share again was 31,000. So the total profit, $57,000 for the health savings account, $57,000 for the Roth IRA. Now I know I, I simplified this by taking out things like real estate commission and stuff like that. I under, just understand that I simplified this a little bit. So the numbers are overstated a bit but it does exemplify and show you exactly how it works. So again, the total investment, $92,500, created a profit in four years of $57,000. The Roth IRA that, that provided the financing, the equity financing for this deal, um, created a return of about 12.79%. So if you know the rule of 72, you take 72 divided by your, your annual return, 
And that shows you how often your investment doubles. That investment doubles every 5.6 years. It's a great return. There's nothing wrong with a strong double digit return of you know, 9%, 11%, in this case, almost 13% doing this, um, this joint venture for four years, okay? And again, my health savings account was allowed to leverage and create money really out of, out of thin air by leveraging with somebody else's Roth IRA. So that is our property in the cul-de-sac near the VA hospital in Richmond, uh, a way that got my health savings account involved without having the money to participate in buying this property and somebody else's Roth IRA that had the funds but no property. I had the property but not the funds. Somebody else's Roth IRA had the funds and not the property. That's why it works really well. Now, uh, a lot of people ask me like, how do you keep that deal safe? How do you find a deal? First of all, the property, the people and the paperwork, all three are absolutely critical and you gotta check all of them multiple times. Um, so the property I, I showed you guys when we, when we invested in this property, we invested 92,500 against an, an equity position of 135 uh, ARV, after repair value. I showed you guys we rented it for $12.45 a month, so it created a strong cash flow ROI. The ROI on just the cash flow for those four years was strong. So number one is the property. You've got to have equity day one. you got to know how much cash flow it's going to create so you know how much your ROI is. The people are the most critical piece of this. You've got to deal with people with strong character and with experience that have systems and the ability to pay you when you want to get paid. They've got to have the ability to find a property manager and work with that property manager or be the landlord themselves. And then the paperwork is absolutely critical. This is what secures your position if you're the passive investor in the Roth IRA, the paperwork is critical because it gets secured at the courthouse. And if everything goes wrong and you have to take that property back, that collateral, that property is what you get and the paperwork is what gets it for you. So know your paperwork, know who created the paperwork, know where you're wiring funds. It should be to a settlement agent or a lawyer, not to somebody's checking account. And you should receive a promissory note or a joint venture agreement. Understand that you should also always get title insurance and everybody, both the HSA and the Roth should both be named on the homeowner's insurance. So that was a lot. <clears throat> Here's an example visually on how it worked. You have a small dollar IRA. <coughs> Typically, it'll be a brand new Roth or maybe a traditional. But in this case, it was a health savings account. It could have been an educational savings account with some money, but not enough. It's like a starter account. It doesn't have enough to go invest in real estate. But the good news is that through the structure of a joint venture, you can find somebody with a large dollar account, like a Roth IRA, and you can joint venture together, just like it does in this, uh, this visual, that's why I put it together, through what a structure we call a joint venture. It allows the small dollar account and the large dollar account to come together. One creates the deal uh, with the property, one creates the deal with the funding. And then everything is divided 50-50. It's not a partnership, it's a joint venture. All the cash flow every month is divided 50-50. And someday when the property is sold, you get that other really big gain, which is the equity gain, which is really nice. And that's why real estate joint ventures work really well when done in a uh, Roth IRA or a health savings account. So good news. I put together both the joint venture agreement and a brand new due diligence checklist I've been working on. Um, both are available at my website, investingnownetwork.com forward slash JV. If you go there, download that, I will email them to you and you can have them. Again, I, I encourage you to dig deeper into joint ventures. They're a great way to allow both Somebody with, with funds in an account, it doesn't even have to be in, a, in an IRA. I just gave that as an example because it's tax free. But it's somebody with money in a larger dollar IRA that doesn't have any deal flow to participate with somebody that's got a smaller dollar IRA, but has deal flow. 
So the key is to find the person with the deal flow that has strong character, that understands that paperwork and creates the deal um, in an honest ethical way <clears throat> with good character to bring that deal to the person that's got the funding in the large IRA. And that is 100% passive and a beautiful way to go. It creates a great deal and that's why we love doing joint ventures. All right, I hope you got that. Go back and listen again. If you didn't, email me, jim at renovatedhousing.com. I'll be happy to uh, answer your questions. And it's a topic I really like, but it, they've gotta be done right and they've gotta be secured correctly. You've gotta have the right property with the right people involved in the right paperwork. All three are critical. Download that uh, JV agreement and really the due diligence checklist I've been working on. Um, and so that you, the due diligence checklist isn't 100% comprehensive. What it's gonna do is it's gonna make you think through the deal entirely. And it will uh, create questions that you have. So you can go back to your partners and talk through it and make sure that you know what you don't know. And you can get those answers before you do that deal. All right, I'm Jim Ingersoll. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the likes, the questions, the comments. Leave me your questions uh, right here. I'll be happy to answer them wherever you're watching this. And thanks again. Have a great day.